These notes are on graphing a parabola when it is written in vertex form. So um, in order to graph the parabola, um, I need three pieces of information. I need the vertex, h comma k, and I need the a value. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the vertex. You remember that the generic for the parabolas written in vertex form are y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. <coughs> Excuse me. So my h value is 4 and my k value is 2. So in this case, my vertex is 4 comma 2. So over 4, up 2. Another way to think about the vertex value is that the vertex value is always going to be at the top or the bottom. It's the extreme value. And the most extreme value I can have when I square a number is 0. If I square a negative number, I get a positive number. If I square a positive number, I get a positive number. And so the most extreme of these is when I square 0. That gets me 0. So I'm always looking for the extreme value. I'm always looking for what would make, what x would make this be 0. Well, the x value that would make this quantity be 0 is 4. And then if I were to plug in 4 here, that would make this whole part of the equation be 0. So my y would be 2. 2. So now, once I have my vertex, I need my a value. Um, I want you to remember that initially we talked about the parent function a equals 1. That, that value was 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, etc. But in this case, our a value is negative 2. So I need to look at the pattern for when a is negative 2. When a is any other number besides 1, I get the pattern by multiplying the parent function pattern by whatever a is. So 1 times negative 2, 3 times negative 2, 5 times negative 2, 7 times negative 2, 9 times negative 2, etc. So instead of my parabola being the pattern of over 1, up 1, over 1, up 3, over 1, up 5, over 1, up 7, I actually am going to go over 1, down 2, over 1, down 6, over 1, down 10. But the graph I have here doesn't fit all of that, so I'll stop there at um, the pattern where I'm gone over one three times um, and so gone essentially sorry two times and essentially gone over down eight so you'll remember that parabolas have a line of symmetry and that line of symmetry goes through the vertex line of symmetry means that if i folded the parabola onto itself it would end up back on itself exactly so this point right here has a matching point on the other side of the line of symmetry, symmetric from the line of symmetry. So one unit over, one unit over. Same thing with this point. This is two points from the line of symmetry, so its matching partner would be two points on the other, two units on the other side away from the line of symmetry. To finish this off, I connect my points in a U-shaped pattern, and I'm done. A um, couple of notes here. Um, your teacher is going to be looking for these five points. They're going to care less about how beautiful your U is um, and more about the five points that you have there and that you've attempted to connect them in a U-shaped pattern to the best of your ability. Um, I'm not an artist, and so my U's are never perfect and sometimes very wonky, um, but I'm really paying attention to the fact that you've attempted to make a U and you have these five points, which are the exact points the parabola goes through. Let's look at a second example. In our second example, our vertex 
is negative 3 comma negative 2. And let me explain that process again. So um, the best way for me to remember this is instead of memorizing this H and K and positives and negatives, is to ask myself the most extreme value I can get from here. And the most extreme value I can get from this piece is when it equals zero. Remember, squaring a negative gives me a positive, squaring a positive gives me a positive, squaring zero gives me zero. Zero is the most extreme value of positive numbers. Um, so I can ask myself, well, what x is going to give me an x plus 3 equaling zero? And that would be negative 3. And then if this whole thing is zero, zero squared times one third is zero, leaving me negative two for my y. So I now have my vertex, so negative three, negative two. So I need to work with my a value. Well, my a value in this case is one third. So I'm gonna set up that table again. So I have a equals one is my parent function values. One, three, five, seven, nine. But in this case, my a is one third. So I need to multiply my parent value pattern for when a is one by one third. So one times one third, three times one third, five times one third, seven times one third, and nine times one third. And to make my life a little easier when I'm graphing this, I'm actually going to rewrite this as uh, 1 and 2 thirds, and this fraction as 2 and 1 third. Let me just double check my math very quickly there. Yes. So instead of going over 1, up 1, I go over 1, up a third. And then instead of going over 1, up 3, I'm going to go over 1, up one. These are just kind of estimates at this point. But remember, I do know that this length right here is a third and this is a third. So when I do this, this third point, when I go over one, I'm going to go up one. But then I'm also going to go up two thirds. So that puts me exactly on a lattice point which means that I can use that as my sort of my anchor for my parabola. So line of symmetry goes through the vertex. Get my mirror image for all three of my points. And there's my parabola. And again, I'm gonna use really the most important points here are my vertex and these two points that actually go through a lattice value, a lattice point. And there's the graph of my parabola.